we should prove that the summation of 1 as r leads from 1 to n is just equals to n. Now, this is what we do. We rewrite this thing as a summation of 1x, right? Or let's say 1r raised to the power 0 because the index is r, right? So 1r raised to the power 0 is the same as just r to the power 0. So we just have r raised to the power 0. Now remember that any expression raised to the power 0 is equal to 1. So this thing is still 1. As r leads from 1 to some n value. So if we want to expand this, we say when r is 1, you have 1 to the power 0. Plus, when r is 2, you have 2 to the power 0. When r is 3, you have 3 to the power 0. When r is 4, you have 4 to the power 0. And so on. Until r becomes n. So you have n to the power 0. So if we further simplify this, remember each of these now represent 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus dot 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 1. So if you, if you look there, n, that's a 1 has been expressed infinitely many times. So we say 1 has been expressed n number of times. 1 has been expressed n times. So based upon that, we just have the summation of r to the power 0, which is the same as saying the summation of 1 as r leads from 1 to now n is just equals to n. So for the next one, the summation of a constant c as r leads from 1 to n it is similar to this one. So now, we use the property of um, summation notation. So the property states that if you have a constant, you can factor out that constant. Remember now, we can rewrite this thing as c r raised to the power 0 as r leads from 1 to some n. So we can factor out this C now. We will have C, the summation of R raised to the power 0 as R leads from 1 to N. So we know that this one now is just equal to N, so it becomes C N. Now let's look at the next question. Next question says, the summation, we should prove that the summation of R as R leads from 1 to N is equal to N times N plus 1 over 2. Let's prove that, right? So now, we're going to reference Carl Frederick Gore's method. When Carl Frederick Gore was in a primary school, his teacher one day, when they were like disturbing the class, the class was like noisy, the teachers uh, thought on giving them a kind of classwork so that they could keep quiet and do the classwork for a longer period of time. So the teacher asked them to, to find a sum from 1 to 100. While all his other colleagues were on the problem finding the sum from 1 to 100, Carl Frederick Gold submitted his answer in less than 30 seconds. That is to say, in less than one minute, far below less than 30 seconds, because he did not put pen to paper. He observed, he used his eyes, and then he solved the math mentally, and then he was able to get his answer to be 5,050. So let's see how did he arrive at that answer. Now, I'm not going to use the method that his friends used. I'm not going to use or let's just look at that long problem from 1 to 100 that his friends were doing. For you to have an insight of what his friends were doing, I'm going to find a sum from 1 to 10. And then you can even find a sum from 1 to 20, you can find a sum from 1 to 50, 
from 1 to 200, 1 to 1,000 using the same method. So now I'm going to find the sum from 1 to 10. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 and plus 10. Now, this is exactly what his friends were doing, up to 100. 1 plus 3, or plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 5 is 15. 15 plus 6 is 21. 21 plus 7 is 28. 28 plus 8 is 36. 36 plus 9 is 45. 45 plus 10 is 55. So that is exactly what his friends were doing from 1 all the way down to 100. This was what Carl Frederick Gauss did. Carl Frederick Gauss, he started checking in his mind. 1 plus 2 plus 3. The same step continues, dot, 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 because it's the sequence, the common difference is 1, dot, 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 all the way up to the last number. The last number is 100, right? Before the last number is 99, and before 99 is 98. So what he did was, he took the reverse, 100 plus 99 plus 98 plus 3 plus 2 and plus 1. And then he added it up. So the first one now, you got 1 1. Plus 101, plus 101, plus dot, 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 101, plus 101, plus 101. Now, 101 has appeared some n number of times. 101 has appeared some n number of times. But realistically, is that actually n number of times because we know the last number to be 100? So because we are div we are adding these things to two, it's being divided into 200, it's being divided into two equal parts. So 101 will appear some 50 number of times. So n now is 50. So 101 appear 50 number of times. So we must multiply 101 by 50. So it's 50 now times 101. So we just bring this zero down. 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 0 is 0, and 5 times 1 is 5. 5,050 was Carl Fetri Gauss' answer to his teacher. Now, we want to use similar method to determine the sum of this infinite or this n summation, this n sum. We want to use Carl Fetri Gauss' method. So now, let's identify two sums. Let's call this the first sum. Let's call this the second sum. So let's just call this S and S, right? The first sum and the second sum. The first sum, let's go the normal way. When R is now one, we have one. When R is two, we have two. When R is three, we have three. Dot, dot, dot. When R now is the last one, which is N. Well, before reaching to N, is that you get 10, and before reaching to 10 is 9. How did you arrive at this 9? It is 10 minus 1, right? So before reaching to this N, you have N minus 1. Or before reaching also to this, this, this one, you will have N minus 2, right? And so forth. So, we now want to find the next sum by taking the reverse. So we start from the end, n plus n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus dot dot dot. Come on, this are 3 plus 2 plus 1. Then we find the sum. s plus s is 2s. 1 plus n is what? n plus 1, right? Now, look here now. n minus 1 plus 2 
n minus 1 plus 2. So this minus 1 and positive 2, it just equals to the same n plus 1. Right? Because you subtract. So n minus 2 plus 3 is the same n plus 1. Just, just do it. n minus 2 plus 3 is just n plus 1. Plus dot 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 n minus 2 plus 3 is the same n plus 1. Plus n minus 1 plus 2 is the same n plus 1 n plus 1, the last. What do you observe? n plus 1 has been expressed some n number of times, infinitely many number of times. So you have 2s is equals to some n number of times. This n plus 1 has been expressed n times. So we have n times n plus 1. We want to solve for s. So we divide this side by 2. And we divide this out by 2. So therefore, s now will be equals to n times n plus 1 all over 2. And what is our s? Our s now is just this summation notation, which is the summation of r as r leads from 1 to n is just equals to n times n plus 1 all over 2. So this has been proven.